This is going to be hard because it's, it's numbers and numbers are difficult, right? <laughs> That's a good deal to me. What am I talking about? Because it, it, it was a really good way to start. Like yeah. I just had blip, blink, blink from my logo and then, and then in. But I need something at the start that's just not like, oh, our first story this week. Yeah. Our first news story this week comes from California and Shit Audio. They have announced an update to their Loki Mini EQ. It's now called the Loki Mini Plus. And what it is, is basically a four band tone control with analog inputs, analog outputs. And in between, we get attenuation for 20 Hertz, 400 Hertz, two kilohertz and eight kilohertz. Now at the frequency extremes, we can attenuate plus or minus 12 dB and the two in the middle get plus or minus six dB. So that means we can EQ the sound of our headphone system or our loudspeaker system according to our speakers, our headphones, our room, recording quality, or even personal taste. The Loki Mini Plus is available now and sells for 149 US dollars. SoundCloud, they announced this week that they're changing the way that they pay royalties to some of their artists. So they're moving away from what's called a pro rata model and towards what's called a user centric model. So in the pro rata model, your 10 euros or 10 US dollars or whatever you pay for your streaming service goes into a pool of money. And then that money is divided up amongst artists according to their percentage of total plays that month or that time period. So what happens is, is that even if you never play the Red Hot Chili Peppers, they still get a slice of your money. Now in the user centric model, that doesn't happen. So only the artists that you play get a slice of your subscription fee. Now SoundCloud will be doing this for the 100,000 musicians with whom they have a direct relationship. So basically artists who have no record label in between them and SoundCloud. But I think this is very much a move in the right direction. And one could say that SoundCloud are trying to remove the distortion, get it? distortion, remove the distortion from royalty payments in the streaming model. And making royalty payments simpler and easier could be, or probably is, one reason why Jay-Z has decided to sell a 50% stake in Tidal to a company called Square. Now Square will be paying $297 million for this 50% stake. That's quite a profit for Jay-Z who bought Tidal in 2015 for what seems like a mere $56 million. Now who is Square? Well, they are a financial services and mobile payments company based in San Francisco and headed up by Jack Dorsey. And many people will know Jack Dorsey as the CEO and co-founder of Twitter. Now what Square aim to bring to Tidal is a more efficient and I, I would suppose a fairer way to distribute royalties from the streaming service to artists. Because remember, Square have expertise in micro payments, mobile payments, things like that. But I do wonder if, because of the Jack Dorsey connection, maybe Tidal will pick up some social media smarts along the way. I guess only time will tell. Now we move to a company I'd never heard of until yesterday. And they're called Polyvection and they're based just outside of Berlin. So this is kind of a local story. And what Polyvection have produced, so they're making this in their facility on the outskirts of the city, is a affordable network streamer with Wi-Fi. It's called the DAC32 because it's based around an ESP32 microcontroller that then feeds the digital stream onto a Texas Instruments PCM5122 DAC chip. Now, how do you get a stream into the DAC32? Well, you can either use Squeeze Light, so basically it serves as a virtual squeeze box, so it'll talk to Rune, 
or you can use its AirPlay 1 input. I assume this is being done using the SharePort plugin, or you can use Bluetooth. And the whole thing, according to the manufacturer, is a low noise design. And this is probably a good choice for anybody looking for a replacement for the Logitech Squeezebox Touch, but doesn't want to get lost in the world of Raspberry Pis and operating systems and hat add-on boards. Because the DAC32 from Polyvection sells direct from their website for 65 euros. So that's roughly the same price as a Pi 4 on its own. And that's a pretty good deal when you consider that this thing is made in Germany. Our final story this week relates to a 2020 revenue report coming from the Recording Industry Association of America, in which they tell us that the amount of revenue generated by vinyl sales in America is $620 million. And the revenue generated by CD sales is $483 million. So it might be easy to look at those numbers and conclude, well, vinyl is more popular than CDs now in America. But you'd be wrong, because that same RIAA report also tells us that the number of vinyl records, so units sold, was in 2020, 22.9 million units. And for CDs, it was 31.6 million units. So we can see that more CDs, quite a lot more CDs, are being sold still in America than vinyl records. In other words, CDs are still more popular than vinyl is in the USA. But the interesting story doesn't end there because the number of digital downloads sold in the USA last year as albums, 33.1 million. So that's roughly the same number as CDs and 10 million more than the number of records sold. So we can also correctly conclude that digital downloads are still more popular in the USA than vinyl. I think that's super interesting. That's it.